Thank you, thank you, Andy. Um, well, we'll judge about the well-qualified afterwards, I suppose. Um, the talk that I'm going to give today is not actually about law. I'm sorry. I've recently moved from the law faculty to faculty veterinary sciences. So. Um, but nonetheless, it's important because uh, in the view of having a whole new set of disciplines to come into this conservation symposiums, and perhaps this is a valuable addition and you can be the judge of that. I'm not going to go into explaining all this um, acronyms because you'll see them throughout the presentations. Just um, the one thing is that I uh, come now from the University of Pretoria Faculty of Veterinary Sciences and what we're trying to do there is to develop a regional platform based on a One Health concept. Um, we'll see what One Health is and this platform is aiming at training at different, different tertiary levels but also for professionals and also at gathering information that is, that, that is and will be freely available for everybody on the web and a variety of issues that concern One Health, particularly at the interface of conservation and human environment. So where does One Health come from? Um, it comes from two different concepts. One is one world and one is one medicine. Um, without going into much of a detail for it, just know that the first time that, that, that the concept of One Health came about, although very flimsically, was two centuries ago uh, by an Italian medical scientist. And what he basically said was that there's not much point in differentiating between um, human medicine and animal medicine because in most cases what you learn from both actually can help both disciplines out. And then we go on to the concept of one medicine and one, one health. Um, so the American Veterinary Medical Association in their One Health Initiative task, which was one of the first that was created in the world, defined One Health as the collaborative effort of multiple disciplines working locally, nationally, and globally to attain optimal health for people, animals, and the environment. Now, for me, being a social scientist is fantastic because it works across the diff disciplines and it works across the scales as well, which means that there is a, a basic understanding that what happened... You know, most of you will know about the butterfly effect, okay? So what happens in one place will have an effect in some other places, and what happened at one scale will have an input at another scale as well. Um, now, one of my colleagues suggested that perhaps I should introduce the fact that One Health has been extended to ecosystem health in um, what we now call health in socio-ecological system. So basically, understanding and acknowledging whether we like it or not that we live in systems that are based on nature, but in which human have a major say and a major impact, both positive and negative. So concept of One Health, as you can see there, is basically trying to integrate human disease, the environment, and natural diseases. And the bottom line is to attain sustainability or to walk in a sustainable path, because sustainability is not the end of the game. Um, so what is a platform? I, I did a bit of research in that because we had a strat plan meeting at UP and tried to define what we we're going to do with this platform. And I looked around and I was trying to think, first of all, what is a platform? And why do we need a platform? What are these objectives? And so if we're looking at what we're trying to do and, and the projects that have already been uh, developed at UP, we have a training component, a research component, of course, we're academia, implementation projects and institutional support. Um, so again, it's a process of integration, integrating knowledge, integrating decision making, integrating policy making, and making an impact on the ground for people, but also for um, environmental management and conservation. Um, don't worry about that, but um, this is just to give you an idea of what are the recognized platforms by the One Health Global Network. There's only seven of them. Uh, worldwide. The one is the AHEAD, Animal and Human Health for Environment and Development, which is originally a project by the Wildlife Conservation Society, a Washington-based NGO. Then there is a project um, with offices in Botswana and Delhi, which is Gulf Made, uh, and it's a non-for-profit alliance which protects livestock and saves human life by making livestock vaccines, medicines, diagnostics accessible in developing countries. Then there is the Global Alliance for Rabies Control, um, started off in Scotland and moved to the USA. The Health of Animals and Livelihood Improvement Project based at UC Davis, which is one of the major um, veterinary faculties in the world, especially in the in introduction of One Health into academia. Um, ICONS, the Integrated Control of Neglected Zoonosis, and just for those of you who are not aware of it, zoonosis are the disease that can be transmitted between animals and humans, so they're quite a risk at the interface. Um, PREDICT, uh, working globally, it's a USAID-based program. And SOS, Stamp Out Sickness, which is more of a campaign, which started off in Uganda. And, and 
actually this one is the only one that is truly African based. Um, but the lessons learned from looking at how all these um, um, platforms work is that there's, there's different types of, of platforms. Some are charity based or you know, funded by donor agencies, some other academia. And the charity ones mostly work at a global scale, which means that they have an impact uh, all around the world, directly and indirectly, because charities are able to campaign. Now, whether the, the, the platform is charity or academic, it focuses mainly on developing country. And, I mean, you probably are aware of that in conservation as well. There's kind of like an understanding that in Western countries or the so-called developed countries, there's no problems. Everything else needs to focus on developing countries, and that's where the attention goes, which is fine to a certain extent. Um, because what happens in Europe also influences us. And, and for you working in conservation, think about the impact of FMD and the scare that happened in Europe on FMD and what does that mean actually for Africa in terms of conservation and in terms of trade in livestock and therefore livelihood approaches. Um, none actually are working in Southern Africa, which, with the exception of GalvMed, which is based in Botswana now. Um, all use a One Health approach to specific medical problems, either a single problem or a, or a group. So that's the focus. We have to look at the world under a One Health approach. Um, what happens now at the donor agencies? We talked about the charities and, and the donor agencies and the role that they play in establishing some of these. Um, so first of all, of course, um, the Wildlife Conservation Society. They actually did something very odd. They trademarked the um, expression One Health, One World. So theoretically, I should pay them royalties for having put it there, which is not great. Um, but, you know, that's the way some charities go, and, and, and that's it. But look at all the UN work um, and how One Health, uh, being a very multidisciplinary type of uh, platform for research and for understanding the world, has worked across different UN um, agencies. So first is the Ebony Influenza and Pandemic Threat. Then it's UNEP with the Convention on the Conservation of Migratory Species. Then it's uh, a joint One Health model that... Um, derives expertise from a whole bunch of UN and non-UN agencies, including the World Bank. So it tells you, if the World Bank is interested in it, it's big, because otherwise it wouldn't waste their time on it. Um, and then is uh, the UNSDR, which is the International Secretari Secretariat for Disaster Reduction. And disaster reduction is increasingly getting involved into environmental and conservation matters because they understand that sustainable development starts from there as well. And so in the latest Davos meeting, the One Health Summit, uh, they actually focus on One Health, One Planet, One Future. And then is the One Health Global Network, where most of the information is coming from, uh, which facilitates basically the relation between uh, people and, and institutions. So why do we need a platform for, sorry, hmm. for South Africa? Um, this is my own personal opinion, because I've been involved in sort of social understandings of conservation <laughs> principles for quite some time. And... Um, and I've been exposed to other disciplines as well, including disaster risk reduction, including law, um, including human geography, environmental management, and different things. So I think um, that a South African platform is needed because uh, we all experience disease transmission and how a problem that is for basic human development uh, processes, whether they're set up by the law or whether we want to set them up because we don't want them to impact too much on our conservation activities, it doesn't matter. But disease is a problem because it's impair impairing the ability of people to move on and actually make improve their quality of life. Um, also, we live in Africa, which is a very, well, Southern Africa, which is a very big part of the world, all things considered, in geographical perspective. And it's very far apart. I mean, it took me six hours to drive from Pochestrom to here, and at least the road is good. It's a tall road. If I have to go from Pochestrom up to Bendemutale, which is on the top corner of Kruger National Park, it will take me a lot more, and the road is not always good. Um, so it's difficult to provide infrastructure. It's difficult to provide the means for treating diseases or preventing diseases. And we understand that, which is why a more coordinating effort is needed. And then, of course, there is really an inexistent regional forum for, uh, to involve government and institutions for solutions. And I'm kicking myself a bit on the foot foot with this one because, um, uh, as I said in the beginning, I'm the new regional coordinator for animal and human health for environment and development based on the Great Limpopo. Um, and that's the thing. It could become a forum for the whole of Southern Africa, but because I have to focus it strictly on the Great Limpopo TFCA, at least for now, then it cannot be. We cannot resolve all the world's problems, so we're just trying to focus on one 
pretty big geographic area. And so we need something else. We need something else that can bring expertise together and, and share knowledge. So what was the idea of the University of Pretoria? Well, first of all, it started from the Faculty of Veterinary Sciences and from the OEE, which is the World Organization for Animal Health based in Paris. They've been cooperating since 2009 to, to sort of try and introduce the concept of One Health into activities that relate to the university in terms of training, but especially in terms of making a difference on the field and providing case studies for um, sort of bringing this One Health concept into the region and also at the policy level. Um, I'm starting with this idea, which is the Vet Hub, which is the one that I really like the best. I mean, we're in a, we're in a highly technological um, moment. Um, the internet is basically the source of all sorts of information. Um, it's actually um, fright, frightening how much is there and how difficult sometimes it is to find exactly what we want because there's just too much information. So the, web, the Vet Hub is basically a virtual space which will be manned to bring together all sorts of information that relates to One Health pro pro processes and, and, and theories and bring it together in, a, in an organized way so that if you're looking for something, you go into this website, you, you, you see all the, the various disciplines, you're looking for what you can, can find and if you find something else, you can tell them, look, I found this as well, please put it on for other people to share. So it needs to become a virtual interactive space for sharing knowledge about One Health issues all of them, from conservation to um, human health to social sciences. Um, but it also involves a training. So the creation of modules, training modules, that can then be downloaded by other institutions to train their own people. So it's sharing knowledge and sharing expertise. Um, I'd like to give an example, but I can't because it's not from UP. Um, I'll give it to someone who's interested if they want it. So what is the One Health platform concept from Pretoria? Well, first of all, they need to start already from what they have. It's very difficult to start with nothing because you have nothing to show for yourself. So in terms of their research postgraduate training, they have something which is called the Manizi Community Program, which is based near Orpen on the eastern boundaries of the Kruger National Park, um, where they provide research and training for postgrad students. But they're also trying to do longitudinal research on disease spread and um, uh, you know, the, 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 the type of, of diseases that are there, but also training local people to identify disease and, identify and understand the landscape which they use in order to manage the grazing areas and things like that. So that's what the Munizi Community Program is trying to do. Associated to that is the Shlubukani Hamnimal Clinic, which is just a few kilometers up the road. And there, there is sort of more of a One Health training for people and also for local veterinary scientists. Um, they offer daily clinical services um, and ambulatory services for domestic as well as wildlife. Wildlife, of course, being on the verge of Kruger, they deal mainly with the private game reserves around Kruger and not with Kruger itself. Not because there is no cooperation, but because they all have their different systems. Um, and then they build awareness in schools and, you know, the lot. And both of those relate back to the Hansa Heisen Wildlife Research Station, um, which was donated to the University of Pretoria and is managed by the University of Pretoria and the Mpumalanga um, Tourism and Parks Board, which is very interesting because it's a cooperation between an academic institution and a government institution to support whatever is happening on the ground and to support knowledge. Um, so here, that's where the, the, sort of the, the facility is there to provide uh, more uh, formalized training and to have laboratories for research and things like that. So this is what, what is there at the moment. Um, MNISI, of course, is what we call the framework program. Um, this is where most of the case studies come from, where most of the experiences learned, and um, this is where it is hope most of the impact on community life will actually happen. The service provider is Shluvakani, um, and um, it's, it's very important because between the clinic and the MNISI community program, they can actually work together to raise awareness on to very simple things that can help people to prevent diseases or the spread of diseases in the first place, human and wildlife. Um, the Hansa Heisen is, of course, the training facility, and so far the infrastructures are there, but they're very limited because this is a very old place. Um, so that we're not trying to source money for renovation and for expanding the capacity of the center. Uh, because, of course, if you're thinking of original platform and this has to become the center of the original platform, we need to be able to have people there. Um, two programs um, linked to the three resources is the primary animal health care program. 
um, which is a training, but also providing services to, to the people, uh, especially in terms of cattle and livestock management. Yes, thank you, sorry. Um, and then the health and democratic surveillance system. And be, me being a human geographer, I love that because it's GPS-based. So it's actually trying to map um, the movement of the cattle and, and, and sort of trying to identify from there what is the capacity of the area, link that to the resources available, and try to do a better local land use planning. Um, so... This is basically what a regional platform is starting from, which is based uh, from, from, from UP, um, which already has collaboration with other entities in the region as well. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's all sort of coming together, but slowly. Um, and the main forum at the moment for research and knowledge sharing is the AHEAD GLTFCA, just because Pretoria has invested a lot in terms of energy on, on getting this off the ground. Um, it is now a totally a regional program and is supported by um, UP and also by Sandparks because we're trying to get to a point where we can actually use the research that we produce for the annual meetings um, or through ad hoc programs to actually influence decision making at the local as well as the national level and actually get the GLTFCA, which is over 10 years old, to have a meaning for the region as well, which at the moment it doesn't quite have. Um, so what are the opportunities for conservation? Um, well, at to me, it's very uh, linear in a way. One health is concerned about human health, animal health, and ecosystem health. Conservation, to me, should be worried about the same thing. Um, if you don't have healthy people, you don't have healthy ecosystem, you don't have healthy animal, and they're all sort of uh, interlinked with each other. So when you do conservation, you have to look at the bigger picture as well because, um, unfortunately, from what we heard this morning, in terms of the national legislation, some protected areas may think that they are an island and some municipalities may perceive them as such and therefore don't even get involved with that. But that's not the truth, let's face it. We have boundaries. We don't have, like, buffer zones uh, that are empty or full of concrete for 300 kilometers between people and the parks, and therefore we have to deal with it. Um, but also uh, the idea would be to create a collaborative platform. So to get, you know, we talked about this multidisciplinarity, um, and, and the point is that nobody knows absolutely everything. We're not superhuman, we're just human. We have a field of expertises, and we also have the humility to say, okay, well, I need to do this research. I know what I need to do, but I also need another expert to help me on A, B, and C, and D. And so I go and source this expert. And through a platform, it, it's easier then to sort of communicate what the research needs are and to find um, the experts and to create a sort of coll collaborative um, environment. Um, so, in a way, what I, what I was telling you before about the HGLTFCA is that for the moment, this is the only forum that we have. They meet, we'll meet once a year. Um, hopefully next year will be in April. But we need to expand that, and to expand that, that's where the um, regional platform from UP is actually going to come in. And with this, I thank you for your attention. And just wanted to show you something which is happening in the wild. Um, this is the Limpopo National Park in Mozambique, the support zone along the Limpopo River. The zebra came out of Kruger and started to graze with the donkeys of a particular person that lives on the Limpopo River. And now this zebra is highly protective because nobody can touch this zebra because the owner will be very upset. Um, so, you know, in order, a lot of discussions that we had this week about how do we get people to understand conservation. People do. It's just a matter of how do you get the approach to get to them. Thank you.